Hey, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another session of the Fortinet podcast. I'm your host, Chris Dorn with Zentegra, and my co-host here, Israel Quintero. And Howdy. Hey, whoa, man, you're awake. That's yeah. pretty good, pretty good. Monday afternoon, after a, sh- been after a, a long short one. Week. Yeah. yeah, it's been a lot today, a lot of catch up from the short week last week. Uh, but we're here today to uh, chat a little bit around FortiGate automation on our episode 18 of the series. And we have two special guests today from Fortinet, don't we? Yeah, we do. Uh, well, and don't forget, we're actually going to talk a little bit on Photo Monitor as well. Okay. Uh, just a little bit a topic out there for our listeners to just to pique their interest. So, nice. uh, but yeah, we do have two special guests with us from Fortinet. And um, I, me personally, I work with these two guys. Um, I they're they're extremely intelligent, um, very helpful. Um, I really admire these two guys, and and I want to say thank you guys to joining. So I want to introduce um, KC Cook. He's one of the SEs for the Southeast, and we have Tyrell Brashaw, Brashaw from the Mid Atlantic. That actually. Uh, me and Tyrell were uh, co-workers a lot in um, in our area in Mid Atlantic. So welcome, guys. Thank hey, you. well, Thank hey, you. hey, we were co-workers too for for well, what, a year, <laughs> I guess, before they split. Up yeah, you're course. right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. There you yeah. are. Yeah, as, as soon as they start doing the splits and they took you away, but no, yeah, that's right. Um, it's been a while, but and I didn't know this, Chris, that these two this is the first time they actually met. This is kind of crazy. Or spoken to each other, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's what uh, yeah. again in different territories, different managers. So yeah, we don't get the a chance to meet everybody, unfortunately. Yeah. Well, I'm feeling but, pretty yeah. feeling pretty privileged now. So Tyrell, I haven't <laughs> met you yet, but Casey's been my lunch buddy before. So Gotten to spend a little bit of time with him in person since we don't live too far away from each other. Cool, cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, when I first uh, came to Fortinet, I was hearing great things about Casey. Like, yeah, he did a bunch of stuff with automation, and he's, you know, you're you're a big name, man. So, uh, big shoes to fill over in Mid Atlantic. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. I was just uh, another pawn, but <laughs> no, I really a uh, big pleasure seeing you guys again and. As always, I do enjoy working with you guys, um, especially with Fortinet kind of still growing, even though some of, uh, just to get a little bit on the audience, there were certain layoffs and I'm glad it didn't touch none of you guys, but I mean, there's still some structure going around and I think this is not just Fortinet, but all over, but it's pretty good that you guys are still there and you guys are two hardworking guys that I know of so far that I can really trust uh, talking to any customer and client. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah. So, yes. Yeah, we've definitely uh, had some wins with you guys in the past. Look forward to continuing that relationship uh, and working these um, technologies and solutions for our customers. Uh, Thus far, everybody's been pretty happy. and We've got a lot of stuff uh, in the unfolding right now. As far as like the actual implementation of some of these, uh, based off of some of these conversations we we've had together in the past, so a lot of good stuff that's carrying us um, from the professional services side because of that. So, so yeah, so one of the things that um, I want to talk about, especially with these guys, and and nothing against you, Toro. I know you do great things, but I like what KC did, and I want to talk about this with. Uh, the Fortinet automation piece. A lot of people don't understand how beneficial that um, that product is embedded in there. It's like has so many hidden cookies in there. And yeah. uh, <laughs> one of the things, uh, uh, Casey, tell us what you have done with that automation on the Fortigate. Yeah, yeah. So. You can work with a lot of different, not just Fortinet products, but using webhooks, you can kind of connect into a lot of different services. Um, yeah, and, and I was literally just kind of messing around, and this doesn't really have any good like business case, but uh, you know, you have to have a trigger, which really kind of 
you know, kicks off a bunch of different actions that take place in the FortiGate when you're kind of configuring automations. And so I had configured one that, you know, when there, a change took place on the FortiGate, it would automatically do a backup to an FTP server. So it's really just kind of running a CLI script. And then I used a webhook to connect into my Alexa device that would just kind of like send a notification anytime a, a backup was made, essentially. Um, and again, a very kind of just basic solution, but using those webhooks, you can kind of tie in a lot of other services as well. Um, and that's how, you know, even looking at like Forda Analyzer and kind of bringing that into the security fabric, that's where you know, we do automations where like, hey, if a device is seen as like talking to a, a botnet network, that's going to be seen as an indicator of compromise. And you can have it where it can automatically quarantine devices based off of that. I mean, you can look at different, you know, different logs that are being generated on the, the FortiGate, where if there's a, a license that's about to expire or a, a certificate that's about to expire, we can kind of kick off notifications connect into like uh, not Microsoft Teams or Slack to be able to send those notifications. So yeah, there's a lot of different things you can build out with that. Yeah, and, and for our listeners, so this piece is actually already embedded into the FortiGate. Uh, whoever already has a FortiGate, if you guys go to the far left and under FortiNet uh, security fabric, there's a piece called automation. That piece is the part where you actually will set uh, set up a action and a trigger, right? And that's what the what he's really talking about. How do you want that action to be um, or that trigger to be taken account for, right? In this case, uh, setting up that Alexa, right? Uh, one of the cool things, probably, and I haven't done it personally. I'm gonna uh, reach out to you, Casey another day. But having, yeah, let's yeah. say, if I want to set up um, my analyzer went down. I want my Alexa to tell me, hey, analyzer went down or something. I mean, that would be pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's how all the different things you can do. Just, you know, kicking off notifications or even running a script based off of, you know, something like that uh, kind of gives you a lot of options as far as how to build it out. And I know with that, it's already some embedded. So that's a, a great start. Um, and there is a lot of things that you can have this automize uh, from any small triggers from failing from uh, uh, users. I mean, there's so many different options, guys, that you can, you don't have to set up the, a, uh, you don't have to be a, a really good on scripting. Fortinet already gives you all the tools to do it there, but of course they do give you that option to set up your own script uh, to do from your APIs or stuff like that. I mean, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. So, so that I mean, can play not even to uh, just Alexa itself, but you could take that to another level and integrate with like ServiceNow, for example. Yeah, yeah, and absolutely good. It gets generated actions to be applied based off that situation at hand and some of this is actually uh analyzer has it as well right guys yes absolutely yep. yeah yeah but it's always good to have that capability especially if you don't have the photo gates uh set up that automation especially for if you're a one-man shop uh that's a, a really good thing for you that will help you uh be more productive and if something comes up let your photo gate tell you rather than you trying to hunt for it that's one of the biggest things that what a next gen firewall does uh excuse me i just had chick-fil-a sorry guys um uh, the next gen firewall does for you guys right is uh help you automate some of these things uh give you that uh layer seven um application uh, control i mean there's so many things that a next gen firewall does um, so if one of you guys um, explain to me what is the big difference between, and I'm putting you guys on the spot right now, a solid, a solid state uh, firewall and a next gen firewall. Because I know some of our listeners might have a typical old school firewall um, and they want to compare it to a next gen firewall. How will you guys do that? Yeah, so the next generation firewall is going to encompass all of your um, security within it, right? So you're going to have a lot of UTM options that you can actually utilize 
versus just a regular firewall, you know, um, directing your traffic for you, right? And just making sure that nothing gets through or nothing passes uh, and uh, goes out. So yeah, that's the main difference that I've, that I've found. AC? Yeah, you know, same type of thing, just, you know, adding different functionality in there. It, it just kind of going back to the, the basis of, you know, why automation is important is a lot of customers that I talk with, you know, they don't have, you know, highly skilled IT security engineers, like, you know, being able to leverage the automations to either help with like monitoring, to help with quarantining of devices, you know, being able to do pretty much just anything based off of the different events that are taking place coming across the firewall. That's something that, a, you know, a stateless firewall isn't going to be able to do. So that, that next gen firewall is able to kind of monitor everything. We can kind of build in those integrations and just kind of, you know, make up for maybe having a small IT team or just a less skilled IT team. You know, that's really what automation is there for in the first place with the, the four decades. So for our audience out there that are looking into getting a four decade, what will you say will be the first thing to do as an automation? Yeah, well, I mean, there's a couple of things that you could do. Uh, honestly, I think backing up the configurations is a good one. You know, we do have some tools that will do that for you if you look at like Forta Manager or Fortigate Cloud. But, you know, if you have an FTP server or, if, you know, this may be a little bit more technical, but if you could stand one up, you know, you could have it really kind of automate the configurations backing up or being stored to a, a FTP server. I feel like that's kind of a simple thing that's kind of important. You know, there's a lot of like, it, people that will kind of create a script where it's like, all right, you know, I want to reboot my FortiGate once a month just to make sure that everything's fresh and clean. You're kind of clearing the, the memory and everything. So I've seen customers use scripts for that where it's like, all right, I'm just going to reboot my FortiGate you know, once a month. Uh, again, simple mm -hmm. things that you can do after hours. You just kind of create the script, you schedule it and, and let it go. Um, you know, it's kind of a good starting point. Oh, yeah. Yep. And just to piggyback off of that, um, some of the things I've done, the uh, more simpler things, it would be, you know, just to get an email when my network is down or to get an email um, set up when my Forta Analyzer down or, you know, um, when I'm doing HA, I have an email for if one should fail over or not. So those are some really cool things that you can get done as well. Yeah, that's awesome. Now, a lot of these are already kind of pre-built uh, with Fortinet, right? And that's one of the biggest things that I do love about Fortinet is that they give you a lot of things for you rather than you trying to figure it out and uh, try to create yourself. It's already there. But there's one thing, and, and again, guys, I'm kind of putting you guys in a little bit on the spot. What can you guys tell me about that photo, um, that app that you guys can uh, log in into? That it can give you that notification too. Do you guys know? Oh, oh the uh, Ford Explorer. Yeah, Ford, yeah, Ford Explorer. Ford Explorer. There you yeah, go. Yeah, yeah. Um. So yeah, I've um messed around with it a little bit. Um, I do like it. I do like it. However, full disclosure, I think that a little bit more can be done there. Right, because you kind of have to be right next to the firewall and you have to, you know, use a well, at least for my iPhone, right? You have to like use the uh, lightning cable, you know, to the uh, back USB port in order to get that information. So, uh, it's it's good, but I think a better use case would to just do the FortiGate cloud personally, in my opinion. Okay, that's well, fair. And, yeah, and Terrell, and too, I, I, I guess I don't really know the, the background connection there, but I, I've mm -hmm. used Ford Explorer. I did like the, the years, I bought it for a year, just kind of try it out. I think when you're mm -hmm. connected or have a FortiGate connected to the FortiGate cloud, it kind of establishes that management tunnel unless you configure it without having to connect via Bluetooth mm -hmm. or lightning cable to the actual device. So you can do some you know, configurations there or get those. And the reason I think Israel brought this up is being able to kind of kick off those notifications as well, where it's like, all right, I can connect to a, a Microsoft team or Slack channel and kind of send notifications there. You can send emails, but also being able to get it directly to your phone. I feel like that could be big for a few people. Like, hey, I see that I got this notification that my Forta Analyzer connection is down. You know, I can connect to the FortiGate directly from the app as well and kind of, you know, look at, you know, the different interfaces that are there 
hopefully do mm-hmm. some troubleshooting. So yeah, I, I think there's a lot that Forty Explorer kind of brings into it too. And and that's uh, a valid uh, answer right there because a lot of uh, customers might not want to have their emails get flooded, right? And some of them, they just want something as an alert. It's a free app where they can download this. And let's say if the WAN connection go down, you can actually set that trigger up to, I mean, the action item to Photo Explorer. And like Casey mentioned, it's tied in uh, tied up to your Photo Cloud. Now, if they do get that full subscription version, then yes, you can actually uh, remote access it from your phone. Um, actually, I use it. I get those messages um, to from the actual app itself. Uh, but I just get the critical ones. The rest of them, it will still go to my email boxes or anything like that. I mean, emails are good and dandy and everybody's already used to those. But what makes it more efficient if you have a phone and you have an application that tells you, hey, there's an alert compared to an email? You already know you're getting a whole bunch of emails, but you're not getting a specific notification from this application. So that could be a game changer for a lot of people if they do have that action item to go through your photo uh, explorer. I mean, yeah. to me. Yeah, yeah, it kind of cuts down on the noise a little bit from email, so. Yeah, and it, it is tied up to your photo cloud. Um, again, now if everything is tied up to your photo manager, uh, you still have to log into your photo manager to get access, uh, but everything is free is part of that Photonet uh, Photo Cloud package um, with it. But it is pretty neat if you do get that alert stating, hey, your licenses are about to expire. That's one of mine that I do have. Hey, my WAN connection is down. That's another notification. So. <laughs> yeah, you know, based on the alert on your phone that there's a critical issue with your WAN link in your lab environment and thus the next text message from your wife, you know what it's already about. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, but you guys got to think about it. Like your typical support guy, they get hundreds of emails, right? Mm-hmm. How can oh, yeah. they determine which ones are critical? I mean, yes, you can have service now. You can tie it all that up, and that's that's great, right? You can have things like that. But at the same time, let's do something unique. How about for the most critical alerts, put in your app. But some cases, some companies have certain visions. Hey, we're not, you don't have to download nothing. And that's totally fine. But that capability is there for companies that they want those uh, tier one, tier two, or tier four, whatever right they want to have that free app to download sign in and get that alert why not i wouldn't mind yeah yeah terribly useful yeah and chris you uh mentioned that this is your first time really hearing about this automation piece in this regard i mean i knew it was kind of there but i haven't not being in the operations side, uh, kind of removed from the need of it, but it's we've kind of spoken about it in the past, um, a little bit on the podcast series, but then to customers as well when we were chatting about, you know, the the capabilities and the the benefit of these pre-created automations that exist inside of the FortiGate environment you know it's they can sit there if you don't take advantage of them but then it's like partners like us to come in and and, and the teams from from Portanet too i.e casey and tyrell you know when they're showing these things off i'm sure that they're they're pointed out you know that these things are in there i know you do it a lot israel you kind of point out the benefit of a lot of these canned components and configurations that customers should take advantage of and it just shows that you know Fortinet's really been thinking about that on the front end to make things a lot easier in the ramp up time and the ability to get to like full production in a in a solid pre like recommended kind of configuration setup. It's there for yeah. you. 
So go ahead and take advantage of it because it's going to make your life easier. So just like that example of your, your WAN link in your lab going down, you know, if that might be your home, your home network. And, you know, that's acceptable with a certain amount of time, but there's, you know, a lot of organizations time is money and that's very costly when some of those critical alerts might be coming in. Yeah, definitely. Time is always money, especially for companies. Uh, right. Um, but one of the biggest things that, like I mentioned, they already have some pre-configured for you guys. Uh, one of the biggest ones is compromised host. What is that mm -hmm. like? If the folder net, uh, the folder gate actually sees one of those endpoints get um, some malicious or feels that it's threatened, it's gonna you can actually put that as automatic quarantine and send you an email telling you, hey, you have a device in quarantine. I mean, who wouldn't want to do that? I'm not going to try to go in there and hunt it out. I like it to tell me. <laughs> yeah. Well, and that's one thing I usually point out too when I'm kind of doing like the FortiGate demos. It's just, you know, we have this functionality where I can go into the firewall. I can choose to, you know, quarantine a device, right? Throw it into a particular like quarantine VLAN or something. But that's a, a manual process that you need to, again, it's more reactive, where if we can be a little bit more proactive and actually have this automated, like, all right, just send me a notification at that point when a device gets quarantined. So I know that, hey, somebody's going to come to me complaining because their device has been quarantined, but I'll, I'll at least have that information beforehand and uh, kind of set it up where, again, you're you're automating a lot of that so you don't have to be sitting in front of a computer just waiting to quarantine a device right away, right, with the manual process of it. Yeah. Tara, so what is the one of the things that you talk about when you're showing your clients the the FortiGate, especially around automation? Yeah, so usually, you know, when I talk about the, the FortiGate, we also end up talking about endpoint protection, and that's why I say, hey, you know that when you have the FortiGate and when you have for the analyzer and when you have um, for the EMS, you can actually do your automatic quarantining through that, right? You can have um, the endpoint talk to the FortiGate, which then talks to Analyzer, and then that tells the endpoint to quarantine itself, right? So that's another benefit that I that I tend to use when, um, when we're talking about how the security fabric works together, right? So that's what I like to really touch on. Yeah, and, and that's a valid point, right? Because Fortinet is, uh, I mean, they are well, well known through their firewalls, right? Uh, but some people, that's the only thing they know about. They don't know they make switches. Some of them don't know they make APs or actual endpoint, like for the client. Uh, so that's a very valid point. Now, it does what the, in the FortiGate level, it does quarantine devices that even if they don't have an agent, as long as it's on your network and that gets into something that is not supposed to get to, it will just isolate that IP address, making sure you don't get nothing else, just to make sure it's being protected, your whole environment. Yep. Yeah, I've used the example around that a couple of times where, you know, if you had a full fabric and you had the FortiGate, some switches, APs, what have you, and you had like a Forti client user who's traveling and say they're all the way in like Asia Pacific someplace and they, they become infected with some kind of ransomware. In a, at a high level, an AP in the basement back at the home office is going to be aware of that back in the United States, that, that person back over in Asia Pacific is infected with some kind of malware, mm -hmm. ransomware component. And that's just the kind of the power that that automation, it's like you, you've taken that knowledge and spread it out almost at a level that you're tracking everybody that globally that's a part of your, your fabric. So even if they're not physically present and attached to that fabric at the moment there is the the data is present to where the fabric can act on the behalf and protect that fabric even when that user is not physically again connected to uh, a specific port on the network or you know present physically present inside of that building and i think i just think that's absolutely incredible yeah really so yeah, really kind of, it's really kind of come a long way, you know, it's like, you know, 
that repository and that the, those key proxy points for that, that kind of data to travel through. It just gives that that fabric the intelligence that it needs to, you know, not only act accordingly, but to report on and then take action on and then plan around for the future. There's a, a lot of stuff that can be said for that because without that kind of information and insight into what's going on, it's you know, it's pretty fruitless efforts at that point. Yeah, and just to add into that, I mean, one of the things is when I mentioned it gives you that full capability, you can create your own stuff, right? Yeah. The Fortinet is already tracking everything for you. So you can go in there and look what do you want to be notified. Like there's a lot of things that you can create. And and what Casey created was very creative. Um and I mean, I'm not, I don't think he did it, uh, but he has seen someone else done it or something like that. I mean, there's different resources out there uh, to help you out, just to see what you can get and make your life a lot easier. And by utilizing those tools that are in there. And uh, the main reason I really wanted to talk about this is because a lot of people don't see that benefits. They don't utilize this. I've talked to other clients like, oh yeah, I have this. But eh, never used it. I'm like, what are you, you're missing out on this. You're making your life a lot more harder. I'm a type of guy that why work harder? If you, this can be yeah. done automatic, mm -hmm. why not? Or <laughs> smarter. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. I agree. It's one of the things you used to say, Israel. <laughs> to to the customers, what? You, it's one of the things you used to say to customers to be like, let the Fortigate do it for you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And and that's true. I mean. Let the computer, let that AI that is in there do that for you. I mean, we're humans, right? We're we're going to shut down once in a while, or we're going to shut down no matter what. The computer's not. The firewall's not. Let that thing run and do its job. That's what it is built for. And Amen. yeah, let it tell you. So now I know I mentioned that you guys have two different regions, right? And uh, now I, I want to start off with you, uh, Tyrell, uh, because me and you were first in the Mid-Atlantic area. Well, I know, Casey, okay, it was me and you first, but they split it up. <laughs> but <laughs> but now that uh, Tyrell, after I left, or what what have you guys been seeing from your customers? Um, uh, what type of product have you guys been hearing a lot? So right now, the big talk is SASE. That's that's the major um, thing that we are um, that customers are asking for. Right? They they want to not really have any physical infrastructure if they don't have to. Right? So knowing that SASE has the ability to do. Um, you know, your CASD for you, your ZTNA for you, you know, the SWIG, right? Knowing that it can do these things, customers are really intrigued by it. And that's pretty much been like 50% of my calls at this point, right? And beyond that, you can integrate it with an SD-WAN solution for on-prem if you want to, right? Where you can do SPA and have your resources protected back to your on-prem resource. So, Okay. Yeah, that's uh, it's actually one of the big trends that is out there for the SASE or SASE itself, right? That has been the big word. Um, no, appreciate that. What about you, Casey? Yeah, no, I, I think SASE is kind of a big thing that I'm seeing a lot more of. Uh, we have like our SOC as a service, which a lot of customers have been looking at um, just to have, again, when you, they have smaller IT teams or just not the the, the abilities to look at logs on a regular basis, that's where you can leverage Fortinet's security team to do that for you. Um, and then Fortinet Monitor is another one that I've had in the past couple weeks. I feel like I've done multiple demos of it, uh, which is a newer product for us, but it's uh, one that I wish I had in my last role. It's uh, just got a bunch of features that are, are really cool. All right. So I haven't had a lot of hands on with Fortinet Monitor. Uh, what, what are some of the examples of the uh, features and components that it might be able to help with the automation aspect. Yeah, yeah, it, it really is just kind of a way to monitor all of your infrastructure, really kind of no matter where it's at, you know, no matter what it is you're trying to kind of monitor. Um, 
whether it's a FortiGate, whether it's a, a switch, and it doesn't even have to be a Fortinet switch, uh, you know, whether it's a cloud environment where you have a bunch of like uh, VMs that are running, we essentially can either connect to those cloud environments and pull in that information into FortiMonitor. And FortiMonitor is really just kind of a cloud portal where you can see the, uh, call it like a stoplight report, right? Whether it's, it, it's green if it's healthy, it's red if it's not healthy, and it's yellow if it has like a warning or some sort of error maybe. So just being able to kind of get that high level overview of all of your infrastructure and see all the different services um, and the services being kind of a key point too, because not only are you going to be worried about, you know, the servers and everything that you're running, but hey, are my users, are they having a good experience? Are they able to do uh, Microsoft Teams? Like we can install an agent on, you know, your different users' laptops and then kind of look at their Wi-Fi signal. Like, you know, hey, what is their upload and download speed? What's the actual like, transmission rate, we can look at, you know, the actual TXRX of the Wi-Fi. Um, so you can actually monitor those devices and actual, that's where it's called like a digital experience monitoring. Cause we're actually able to see like, all right, you know, this device for whatever reason has some, some Wi-Fi issues. Like, okay, I know I'm gonna need to look at this. Uh, there's countermeasures that you can do. Like, let's say, you know, if a server for whatever reason has a, an application that hangs, uh, you know, I could do a countermeasure, which would be like, all right, I'm gonna run the top command on a Linux server to look to see like, what are the top applications that are eating up CPU. You could do like netstat to see like the, the, the internet connections. And then all that information is correlated into an incident where you can just click right into it and have all the information at your fingertips. So I can like start troubleshooting and um, see everything that's there. Um, but it just kind of allows you to do like create dashboards as well. So. In the big push for it too is I just I feel like every customer that we work with now is really kind of a a software company. You know, even if they're not, there's software that they're using that they're either collaborating with their customers or that their cu customers are using to be able to look at their services or you know information. So being able to kind of see everything that you're using and be able to provide that information to your customers is is super important. So Ford Monitor is just Again, it's one of those tools that I wish I had at my last role when I was, you know, managing an Azure environment for a lot of our customers. You know, if, if a server went down or if a SQL server kind of hung, you know, hey, I could do a countermeasure that automatically reboots it. You know, I don't have to like log into it and redo it myself. Uh, yeah, it's just got a lot of functionality to be able to monitor all those, do alerting on them, um, and even set up multiple alert timelines where, you know, if it's between eight and five, I want it to go to this particular group of users, but maybe after hours, I want it to go to this group of users. So there's just a lot of uh, configuration and granularity you get with Ford Monitor for sure. Nice, wow. nice. And you can create, uh, I assume, but you can correct me if I'm wrong, you could create like your own kind of health checks against those applications from within yep. Ford Monitor. Okay. <clears throat> Yeah, it's kind of got different metrics depending on what device you're connecting to and what type of information it has. Um, you know, we can even use like SNMP to connect into different devices and monitor their CPU and memory utilization and everything. So there's a lot of different metrics you can pull in. Then you can leverage something like your Florida ABCs and Florida web and kind of decide on where to steer the traffic based off that kind of information. Uh, I don't think it has that kind of integration with Ford ADC. That might be something they're looking at doing. But yeah, as of right now, I mean, obviously you would have that information, but there's not uh, automations for it just yet, I don't think. I think one of the tools that they're really trying to compete with is like Ovic. That's one that I used when I worked at an MSP. I know we use that to kind of map different environments and back up the configurations of different switches and stuff that were in the, the network. Uh, so we can do that kind of thing with Ford Monitor as well. Um, oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah, I played with it a little bit uh, back in the day, uh, Photo Monitor when it first started. Um, I'll maintain my comments from that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, uh, going by Casey, I did talk to him about this uh, not too long ago, and he told me a lot of improvements, what they have done. And of course, Fortinet is that type of company that really have to fix it to go with our own vision. And it, it takes a while, like any other company, right, to make a, a great application run. But at the time when I touched it, it was still in the beginning phase. And I heard that is really good so far. So that's good. Yeah. What what would be your biggest competitor? I know you mentioned one, uh, but what would be the biggest competitor about this? Yeah, and it really depends on which 
features and functions you're looking at. Uh, I mean, again, if we're just monitoring infrastructure, there's like manage engine, there's RMM tools that are out there. There's, you know, uh, solar winds, I know is one that I used at, at my last role. Um, but it, there's just a lot of features that are added to Florida monitor, which expand on that, you know, that the whole digital experience monitoring where I can see like, all right, they, there's like public probes where I can test, you know, the connection to Microsoft Teams. Uh, so I don't have to go to down detector or, you know, is this service down or whatever to try and find out. Like I'll get a notification from Florida monitor if Teams is down. Um, just, yeah, the ability to kind of have that whole digital experience as well as monitoring infrastructure, it just kind of adds a whole nother uh, aspect to it. And not to put you on blast again. <laughs> so I know yeah, they, they sell a different SKU uh, for best practice. Uh, can you talk a little bit on what is that going to be Intel when it comes to the photo monitor? The best practice service? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so that's really just kind of meant to be there to help customers that maybe don't have a full idea of how they want to implement it. Um, you know, or maybe you start with monitoring just kind of your infrastructure and then you start adding in some of the digital experience monitoring or they call it DEM, D-E-M. Um, yeah, so that best practice service, you know, they kind of set up a, I don't know what to call it, other than a journey, uh, just kind of like taking you yeah. through multiple phases where it's like, all right, you know, let's look at your infrastructure. Let's kind of make sure we're getting all the information that you need. Uh, from there, they can kind of help you build out the different configurations of, you know, whether it be alerting on different timelines and everything. Uh, so they really are there. It's kind of like a, you know, just to make sure that you are getting full use out of that product. Okay. Now let's not get it confused with professional services uh, people because yeah. um, we don't want to make it seem that, oh, because I got this, I don't need nobody's help. Um, this is just, they guide you, um, see what you have. So let's, when I want to make that clear to the audience, because I don't want them to say, hey, you said that they will configure this for me. No, they guide you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, that's definitely that's a great thing. Yeah. Thanks for pointing that out. Yeah, Tyra, have you had any encounters with Florida Monitor? I have not actually. <clears throat> yeah, I that's not really one that I've come across. Um, okay. I'm not sure if it's a region thing. I know one of my coworkers has come across it a few times, but it's usually far, you know, in between. And he's our um, SME for it, right? So if if anything comes across, then he's the guy. So. <laughs> but I, you know, so I don't see anything. <laughs> No, that's good. And I know uh, um, back back last year, I knew the project manager. He actually was, uh, we both worked at Riverbed. So we both have that experience when it came to um, the end user monitoring or experience. So um, that's, that's good. I know they have some really good people uh, working on this project. Yes. It's a good bit of information there, guys. Yeah. Now, uh, do you guys want to share something else to the audience that uh, we haven't talked about that you guys think is should be very important to anybody who's listening that want to learn from this or catch their attention? Um, that could be very useful, um, not just the Fortigate or anything particular. No, I, mean, I would say, that, again, if there's a certain feature or functionality that you're looking at, I mean, our, our doc site is public. So whether it's automations on the FortiGate or you just want more information on Ford Monitor, um, you know, docs.fortinet.com is a good place to, to start. Uh, I guess I'll throw it too. like if anybody is interested in Ford Monitor, there is a 30 day free trial. So you can actually kind of spin one up and test it out. Uh, it kind of lets you just kick the tires on at least a little bit and get familiar with it before you kind of make a purchase decision. So. Huh. How how does how will they uh, go by that? If you don't mind me asking. Yeah. So well, and here let me pull up the site while we're talking because I'm not going to remember it. But uh, Florida Monitor. Yeah. So Florida Monitor. Florida Monitor. Dot Florida Cloud. Dot com. Uh, so yeah, if you go to that link, you'll see there's kind of just a sign in page. Uh, but down at the bottom on the left hand side, I believe it says you know there's a, a 30 day free trial, so they can actually just sign up and get access to the service from there. Cool. And, and anybody in the audience, if you guys uh, have uh, want to learn a little bit more or anything like that, please reach out to us um, and we can bring K 
KC or if it's not KC in your region, we can definitely bring other expertise uh, about photo monitor. Um, I still have to learn a little bit more about it. Um, that's one of the products that I'm still kind of in high level <laughs> that I haven't studied too much, but that's pretty good. I, I like that. 30 days free trial. Who doesn't like that? Free. Come on. Right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. uh, what about you, Tyro? Um, I would just say if you want to trial the FortiGate itself, you know, you can always just go get the BM, right? And say, isn't the trial for that um, indefinite now? It's just limited at this point. So what yeah, you yeah. The, inside of the VM? The Forti yep, yeah, the FortiGate yep. VM, they have like a perpetual trial now where, you, you know, you don't have to – it used to be like, what, 15 or 30 days, but you can have it yeah, for free for forever. Days. Yep. Yep. Yeah. There's just some limitations around that, but it still get, lets you get familiar and configure some things, and you can mess around with automations if you wanted to, too. So, yep. still right. plenty of fun to be had. All right, you guys got to explain a little bit more th to that to us and the audience because I'm not tracking mm -hmm. that. Yeah. No. Th there is a trial you can sign up for for a FortiGate, uh, a virtual machine that is perfect. Like, there's no licensing that's needed, and it doesn't expire. It used to be before it was like a 15 or 30 day trial, but now it's perpetual. Um, there's a few steps that you need to do, uh, which I can share the link with you guys if you want to send it out. But um, just kind of configure it where you can get that 48 VM for free for forever, essentially, just to kind of test and play with in a, in a lab environment. So just again, you said the right word right there, guys. Lab, not in production. <laughs> Yes, uh, yeah. <laughs> not put it in the it's not going to work in a production environment. Yes, um, I just that's a great thing you mentioned because it, only because it's free, guys, and they are giving you certain features uh, for you to get familiar with it. Now, the like um, the VM is there. The FortiGate is a FortiGate, right? Now, the big part that makes the FortiNet uh, FortiGate so well is the security. Right. So those bundles are the critical services that actually allows you to be protected in your environment. So but if you want to get familiar with the, the tools, the different type of things that comes with it, um, rather than just the security, just to get your hands on. Uh, definitely, that's a great way. Uh, please reach out to us again. Uh, we can bring uh, Fortinet and I can get that link from uh, Casey or Tyrell and we can show you guys. Yeah, that's a great segue into kind of wrapping this <clears throat> this conversation up and pointing out some of the stuff we got on deck here. Um, if you're listening to this podcast before September 19th, uh, we're hosting our Fortinet Fundamentals webinar with Israel here, kind of kicking the tires on some stuff. So you have the opportunity to deploy your own uh, FortiGate for free. <laughs> And then kind of guide yourself along during the webinar to kind of dig a little bit deeper into some stuff that Israel will be covering on that. And then, of course, well, that webinar is going to be a little high level, but yes, yes, they can get the big picture. Well, then they can, you know, dig in there and see what what some questions will come out from just doing some additional clicks and getting a little bit deeper in there. But um, if not, if you missed that or you're listening to this after the 19th of September, then you can check out our YouTube channel and be presented there as well. Guys, I really appreciate you all joining us today. This has uh, been a great conversation. And uh, yeah, I learned some stuff out of it as well. So I always, always like the ones where I can walk away and get something good out of it. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, thank you, Casey. And Israel, yeah. thanks for putting this together, guys. Yeah. Well, again, guys, it was a pleasure. Um, I really do appreciate you guys coming in. And uh, I think, Tyrell, I know we're going to probably talk about Sassy. I know you want to talk about Sassy. And we might bring uh, Emmanuel back. Uh, he's the yeah. big Sassy guy, too. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> definitely uh, that will be our next topic. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. All well, right, thank guys. you again very much. We'll chat with you guys soon. Thank you. All right, later. Thanks,